your education series. And um, yeah, uh, these are the eight classes, but like I just said, we're gonna switch out class seven for kids and oils, which should be a fun class. Um, and we're going to do the foundations here, um, basics. But I like how they did it. It's, it's a really great um, organization, I think, because they go through the parts of the plants and then they pick an oil for each one. So, so we'll get started. Um, basically, how do you use your oils? Um, they're labeled, uh, which really is nice. So if they have a supplement fact on them, that means you can take them internally. There's only a few really that you can't, um, and those are in the product guide. So I can't, um, I've seen people teach classes from this product guide. It is so full of great information and it's such a simple way. So if you go to this quick reference guide, you will see um, <clears throat> the aromatic column with the A's, the topical with the T's, and then the internal with the I's. And if there is no I, you can't take it internally. And those are usually trees or bushes. So for example, arborvitae, blue tansy, um, you cannot take internally. Uh, as well as cypress, Douglas fir, eucalyptus, uh, jasmine touch, neroli touch, rose touch, Siberian fir, spike, spike nard, um, and wintergreen. So those should never be taken internally. Um, now to move on to the primary safety issue is, is skin sensitivity. So a lot of us, you know, with sensitive skin, you have to really think twice before you put on those hot oils or citrus, like the citrus are photosensitive. So if you were to put on a bunch of orange oil and go out in the sun, that could be a problem. Um, you don't want to do that. So stay away from the citrus before you go out in the sun. But otherwise, you can put citrus on if you're just sitting in a cold house on a winter day and you want a little citrus fresh feeling. That's really not a problem. Um, but those hot oils, they will get you. Um, so keep out of your eyes, your ears, and your nose. So a lot of us like to recommend to kids, um, to moms with kids with ear infections to put basil around their ears. And that's not a problem. Just keep it out of the ear canal. Basil can be really effective for that. So here we are. The A, T, and I, like I said, you can diffuse them. You can put them on topically. And a lot of them can be taken internally, but not all of them. Now, when you're putting them on topically, there are some that can be used neat, which means no dilution. So neat means you don't need to add anything, um, like coconut oil. But others need to be diluted because they're hot or they're just too potent for um, sensitive skin. So then you would add a few drops of fractionated coconut oil or any kind of really carrier oil. You know, there's so many different kinds. My daughter and I have recently become enamored of jojoba oil. Um, because it's just really great for the skin and um, <clears throat> she's dealing with acne and things like that. So that's a really good one. Almond oil, you know, you get sesame oil, you get kind of like you're, you just want to change it up and be a little creative. So you can even use olive oil or coconut oil out of your um, kitchen cabinet for that matter. So um, don't be afraid to switch it up with the uh, carrier oil. I do have to say, I have to put in a plug for our fractionated coconut oil though, because it stays uh, liquid at room temperature, which is really nice. It doesn't have a coconut scent, and it's just a very light, easy, uh, spreadable thing. So I do love our fractionated coconut oil. Um, and then finally, oftentimes you want to dilute, and by diluting with the carrier oil, it can help it go deeper into your skin, and it can just help it be absorbed more uh, fully. And one thing that I like to do is like, if you have, say, upper respiratory issues and you're trying to put on breathe, instead of putting it on totally straight, put a teaspoon of a carrier oil, a couple drops of breathe, put it all over your chest, and then put a warm compress on it. Or let's say you have like a stomach ache. Same thing with digest scent. Those warm compresses with a little bit of heat drive things in a little more and make it just a little bit more effective. So um, anybody have any hot tips that they've, um, used to get oils in their bodies like this. <laughs> Anybody have anything they want to share? 
Certainly someone's come up with a creative idea. I did watch one of the empowerment series where this woman had a kid who was just not feeling well and she had him make a tent with a t-shirt. So she had him like breathing in, you know, throwing his t-shirt up above his face and just felt like that really got things deeper into his lungs and helped knock his cold out a little bit more. So people are creative. And I've heard that castor oil is a really great thing for the belly with digestion. So you can put castor oil on your belly with a hot compress or a heating pad. It can help, you know, ease a stomach issue, shall we say. Lori? Yeah. I did hear of one woman that did stealth aromatherapy on her children by putting it, uh, she did the, the laundry. Ah. And she put, she put it on their underpants on the band. I love that. Yes. <laughs> so when their bodies heated up, they got the benefit of it. <laughs> that is a great tip. I love that. That is so fun. You know, I know a realtor right now who's working with someone who's kind of difficult. And I love that term stealth aromatherapy because she puts orange oil on a cotton ball and tapes it under his desk before he goes <laughs> to work. <laughs> and she thinks it's putting him in a better mood. <laughs> so anyway, I love that stealth aromatherapy. We got we to gotta write a book about that. All right. So anybody else have anything to share? Any other hot tips? All right. Moving all along here. So here are the hot oils. Um, I think we're all like, I had a period last week where I knew I had a virus going through and I was putting oregano on straight. Um, but I was doing it on my feet and my feet are pretty tough, you know. Um, if you move to like other types of skin, it can be really not good. So these are the dilution ratios for oregano, cinnamon, clove, thyme, and cassia. But these are the oils that really help you knock stuff out, you know, this time of year when you're working on a virus. So um, very good oils to have in your toothache. Anybody have any um, stories? I know Leslie's got an oregano story. I know she does, whether she'll share it or not. <laughs> well, the, the truth of the story is never get your oils out in the dark. So I had a really sore throat. So I stumbled into the bathroom and I grabbed the oil that said O oh, and I started dumping it into my mouth because I thought it was on guard and it ended up being oregano. And um, when the, so when it, I, I finally realized that it was oregano, <laughs> what do I do? The thing that you're not supposed to do, I gulped water. So it just drove it deeper in. So I must have drank like a gallon of water. Um, it, it was horrible. But the next day, um, my, I was all better. <laughs> all my viruses and germs and bacteria and whatever I had going on there, it was gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. You know, I, that is a good point though. So she's making the point about water. So if you get peppermint in your eyes, cause you have a headache and you're putting it around your temples, just remember to, um, Try to dilute it with oil and not water, because water drives it in deeper. So that helps, that, that really does help. <clears throat> so as I was saying earlier, we've got great uh, fractionated coconut oil. It's got all these great properties, <laughs> excuse me, and <clears throat> these hot oils are really good to dilute with this oil, so. All righty. Uh, ah, come on, my. Thing does not want to move forward here. Hold on a second. Ah, why is this happening? Oh my. Any? So click, your, click your arrow buttons. Yeah, I'm clicking them and nothing is going on. Why is that? Okay, so are you the down or the over? I was doing the down and the over. You know what? I may have to. Okay, so go to your PowerPoint. Yeah. Up top there. Uh -huh. I'm gonna start it oh, over again. I'm sorry about that, but um, it's stuck. It got stuck. Come keep me. My phone is a little bit off here. So there's some background noise. So if you're 
next to that. If you're not muted, could you please mute yourself by using the bottom button of your screen and just mute? Okay, hopefully this does it. Okay, I'm sorry about yeah. that. Here we go, we are scrolling along. Okay, so why plants? I mean, I don't know about you, but I love plants and I trust plants and we're made of the same thing. So, um, in plants, essential oils perform many functions, uh, helping with plant growth, regulating metabolism, uh, functioning as the plant's enzymes, building the plant's immune system, and they can do all that for us too. So that is, I think, a great argument for why we want to stay closer to plants and stay further away from synthetics that don't agree with our body whatsoever. So when a plant is cut, it produces an oleo gum resin, which initiates the healing. And um, that is the volatile oil, the gum or the resin. So most of the time we're thinking about oils, but you know, we do have this situation where like frankincense and myrrh are resins. <clears throat> so uh, I think that's kind of cool. You know, we are part of sort of the living kingdom of things that ha are made out of carbon and we want to just use things that are compatible with us, like an essential oil. So the th other thing is that essential oils are really smart. Um, somebody does need to mute themselves. I'm not quite sure, but I can hear something. Um, so essential oils are smart. They absorb into the skin and the body quickly, uh, promoting proper cell defense and integrity, both inside and outside of the cells. Uh, some ward off environmental and seasonal threats, while others promote circulation and enhance your mood. And who hasn't felt that, you know, the, especially the mood enhancing part. Um, and since we're all about trying to get through the winter without, right. you know, huge uh, illness, we need them right now, a lot of them. And circulation right. certainly helps too. So we're going to, um, I love the way this is organized and how we get to go through a plant and just think about the parts. So we have a lot of oils that are made from the flowers, a bunch from citrus and the berries, tons from the leaves, um, and a few from the twigs, uh, bark and wood, and uh, resin and seeds. So we're gonna go over these using these categories and see if we can pick out things. So what you can tell is that, you know, some of the ones from the lower part of the plants are grounding, like the root type oils, and then the flower kind, you know, they just enhance our mood and bring us up. So, and then the roots, okay. So if you're really interested in this on how they're extracted, how they're made, you need to go to class number eight, which yeah. is part of the essential science class. Um, All right. Not as good per se as the 2010 one that I had, and I think that's what I'm thinking some, the someone still needs to mute, okay? The not so fancy rims on it. Um, can somebody- uh, like RT edition's got those. Does anybody recognize that voice? They could text whoever it is and, and ask them to mute. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. It might be Melissa, but I'm not quite sure. Anyway. All right. We're looking at the citrus and berry oil. So I'm going to pull out bergamot. And if you have a citrus or a berry oil, could you pull that out? So the choices here, grapefruit, lemon, lime, wild orange, black pepper, and juniper berry. Um, I love bergamot in particular right now because it's like a little lemon looking thing and it's just very uplifting and refreshing. So you can see how the par parts um, are from the citrus, from the rind and it's cold pressed and it has all these great qualities here. So love citrus right now, especially this time of year. And here we go again, my computer or something is not going forward. I'm struggling a bit here, guys. <laughs> oh my gosh. I hate to say it, but I'm going to have to go back again and restart. Mm -hmm. Lori, I think you could mute Melissa's. Um, okay. From where you're at. I private messaged her, but she's not. Yeah, it does say she's muted. So that's. Oh, I know. I th it says, let me see. No. Okay, you're right, you're right. I think I've got it now. Oh my, we are just having a challenge here tonight. Uh, let me see if I can. That's what live shows are all about. <laughs> <laughs> this is not rehearsed in some ways. Maybe. 
Yeah. All right. I just don't know why my computer's getting stuck on these things. So we went through the citrus. Does anybody have any citrus experience they want to share? Any love of a particular citrus? <laughs> I love bergamot and I can't wait till I get it back in stock. Oh, yeah. Agreed. So what do you love to do with it? I just like to smell it. I diffuse it. I'll put it in my hands. Um, I actually used it for um, some muscle pain the other day on my neck. And oh, nice. um, it worked. And it also had a calming effect all at the same time. So it was really nice. Mm, that I sense. I'm diffusing it right now, too. So I totally agree with that. <laughs> Anybody else? Uh, Deb, didn't you also put it in your soap? Oh, I did. Yeah, I made soap with it. Perfect. Yeah, that'd be nice. That'd be really nice. Whew. Well, here we go. Um, it's great for self-confidence. Uh, they call it the oil of self-acceptance, so that's good. Um, it's calming and soothing, and it's great for the skin. So that would be a great one for soap. Uh, at the bottom, they have a way to make a essential oil mojito with uh, bergamot. And um, yeah, it's got it's citrus, but it's got a little hint of floral. So it is a beautiful oil, and um, citrus are less expensive, so. I think, yeah, it's really a good bang for the buck to get to get a bottle of bergamot. So on to the flower oils. Um, we have a number of flower oils. They lift us up in a different way. Um, they're often light. They're great for energy, focus. They're airy, delicate, fresh. Lead us to feeling sparkling and radiant. Um, and we have some beautiful, beautiful flowers here. Um, now we have the jasmine and the rose touch. Uh, so that's really great. Um, and in addition, all these others, I, I personally love Roman chamomile. It's probably in my top three. <laughs> um, and we're going to look at heliochrysum tonight. Um, so heliochrysum is from the flower and steam distilled and it's herbaceous. And uh, I didn't know it was from Corsica. So you learn a little something every night on one of these. <laughs> um, it's great for reducing blemishes. It's great in a massage. I've, I've definitely read that it's good for bruising. Um, they help promote healthy metabolism and it's definitely a great skin oil. So um, I, I have to say heliochrysum is very precious. It's, you know, the five mil bottle and still so very, very pricey. I think this bottle of five mil is hundred dollars. <laughs> so it's not one that we all have all the time, but every now and then when you get those points all saved up, it's a great oil to invest in. So um, I, I go yeah, ahead. It's also great for nosebleeds or any mm. type of bleeding. Nice. It, it's amazing. Yeah. Oh, that's very nice to know. Um, so down here there is a um, uh, skin recipe using beeswax, shea butter, olive oil, FCO, vitamin E, helichrysum, and zinc oxide. So I think it probably has uh, sunscreen possibilities in there. I just wish we knew what the SPF was. <laughs> so anyway, if you are ever interested in finding recipes, you can go to doTERRA's blog and there are a ton of these kinds of recipes. So um, great stuff on there. Just a quick this <laughs> is the heliochrysum for her varicose veins and she is really seeing a difference. Ooh, that's an interesting one. That's a cool testimonial. Thank you for that. Sure. Uh, does anybody have anything they want to add about heliochrysum or any of the flowers, really? Any of the flower oils they want to mention? Um, I actually used it on my dog's ears. Um, <laughs> he had a hematoma mm -hmm. and it actually took it away. Yay. Wow, that's really cool. Thank you. All right, moving to the leaf oils. We have a ton, ton, ton of leaf oils. These are often the herbal things. Um, and you know, essential oils are like 50 to 70 times more potent and powerful than herbs. So um, we have basil, cilantro, cypress, eucalyptus, lemongrass, marjoram, all these great things that we can um, get a powerhouse from our oils. And they um, are, you know, giving us the qualities of clarity, purity, they're uplifting and they're fresh. And who doesn't love, you know, just a little hint of herbal goodness in their lives here. <clears throat> so tonight we've got marjoram on the brain. So marjoram I've noticed is really great for muscle aches and pains. And um, 
I didn't realize ours is from Hungary. It's steam distilled and it's very calming on the nervous system, great for massage, great for the immune system. And uh, I have one, I remember we had this, this guy in one of our classes who had fallen off our roof because he, he was a roofer and he was using deep blue, which is usually our go-to thing, right? When you have that kind of a situation. And he wasn't, he wasn't unhappy with deep blue, but it just wasn't cutting it, some of his pain. When he added marjoram on top of the deep blue, it cut a huge amount out that made him much less miserable. So I always, that always stuck with me, you know, the idea that you might try an essential oil and it might get you part of the way, but you might need to add something else to get you further. So um, marjoram seemed to be that oil for him. And I encourage you to like experiment like that because you just never know. So you can use this in stew at this time of year, make something warm, put a drop of marjoram in. Sometimes it's useful to even use a little less than a drop. Um, you might just use a toothpick. So cooking wise, some of the, cause they are so intense. So it says one drop of essential oil is equivalent to two teaspoons of dried herbs. So does anybody have any leaf oil stories they wanna share? Anything they've had experience with? No. Nope. All righty, moving on, moving on to the twig oils. Okay, so I have to tell you, we had to make a change here. The Douglas fir is no longer available. Um, we still have Pettigrena white, oh wait, it's white fir that's no longer available. Sorry about that. We have Douglas fir, we have Pettigrain. The white fir was replaced with Siberian fir, which is a really wonderful oil. Um, all of these are strengthening, energizing, and active. And um, I wanted to, you know, this time of year, I think they just make you think of the Christmas trees and love that scent. So instead of white fur, I um, pulled up the page on Siberian fur and I want you to know <laughs> that it's very similar. I mean, these things are really great for respiratory um, congestion and for energy. So massaging them into um, your body can be soothing, it can reduce stress, and it evokes feelings of stability energy and empowerment, um, which just makes so much sense when you see those trees through the winter standing so stable in the sto soil. Uh, so we, um, we were bummed to, use, to lose white fur, but Siberian fur covers all the bases. So that's, that's been an okay change. And mainly um, it just creates that feeling of grounding, anchoring and empowerment and can stimulate the mind while allowing the body to relax. So who doesn't love that? Um, you can make cologne using this. Um, these are kind of earthy, manly kind of possibilities here. So does anybody have anything they want to share about any of these um, fur type, needle type oils? I love the Siberian fur. I diffused it all the time. Aw, good to but hear. I, I have a question. Somebody asked me today, because I was telling her about the Siberian fur, and she said her son is allergic to like pine and like needles and pine. Ooh. Do you think that would affect him? I mean, she said, I don't want to buy it. I mean, I'll give her a small sample of it just to see, but yeah, and I, I just have yeah. the synthetics in it, but if it's coming from the oils of the pine, I don't know that answer. Yeah, that's hard to predict. You know, everybody's different and I think you'd have to, um, <clears throat> have them test it out. I find sometimes people will tell me like I'm allergic to lavender, but the experiences they've had is usually with the synthetic variety of something like a Glade plug-in or, I mean, and a lot of that stuff is really nasty because it's synthetic, but I, it, it wouldn't surprise me if he wasn't, but he might be, I guess that's the thing. <laughs> and only, you know, I think also people develop kind of an emotional resistance when they have Kind of an experience like that so he might not be open to it it's hard to say um so i guess i would say tread lightly but don't give up because you know sometimes people shift patterns when they're open and ready to shift them i guess is the main thing mary i think that if you want to give her a sample i'd also give her some uh fractionated coconut oil to dilute it maybe um a little bit more so how were they going to use it? Were they going to diffuse it or use it in, um, you know, topically or how were they going to use it? Well, it was for Carol Vasilko and her kids have a lot of allergies and that's why we were just talking about it. So she knows she has the oil, she has, you know, the coconut oil, but um, 
So I don't know if she she will want to try it or not. Don't know. Hmm. Keep us posted on how that goes because we all deal with situations like that and it's tricky sometimes, but it's worth, you know, it's worth trying, of course. Okay. okay. All right, here we go on to the bark and wood oils, which um, are brevity, birch, cassia, cedarwood, cinnamon, and sandalwood, which are warming, balancing, inspiring, and sort of feel exotic. <laughs> um, and tonight we're focusing on sandalwood, which for me is kind of my go-to meditation oil. Uh, I've sort of trained myself that when sandalwood comes out, it's like calm down time. Um, so I love this one and it, it promotes healthy looking smooth skin and reduces the appearance of skin imperfections, enhances mood. Uh, it's frequently used in meditation because it's grounding as well as uplifting and you can use it to give your hair a silky shine. Um, <clears throat> so there's a shaving cream. Boy, I've noticed a lot of recipes for the men on this, <laughs> which is good because yeah. Men often aren't as involved, but we should start making this stuff for them, huh? So anybody have any testimonials or anything they want to share about any of these woodsy kind of oils? I love sandalwood. It's another pricey one, but it's a good one to buy with points. Nope. Alrighty, on and word and upward. And now to the rhizome and root oils. Um, ginger, spikenard, and vetiver. Um, which are earthy, of course, because they are from the roots. Um, centering, building self-confidence, grounding, balancing, stabilizing, strengthening, and giving courage and depth. And um, I love all these oils. I mean, spikenard, I don't love the smell of, but <clears throat> I can feel the benefits when I use it. Um, vetiver is the one for tonight. And um, vetiver is the one my brother goes to when he's feeling hyper and out of his body. <laughs> Uh, he's developed a real friendship with this one. And um, ours, of course, comes from Haiti. And we watched videos at convention about how the production of vetiver has allowed doTERRA to bring water to the community there. And they've built education centers. And it just feels really good to be helping the people in Haiti. Um, I use this when I wake up in the middle of the night and my mind's worrying and I really can't go back to sleep easily. I try to put a drop on my big toes and my feet as I'm half asleep. And um, I can feel it slow me down back and get back to center that way. So um, I think it's really great for calming a busy mind and uh, for the immune system. So you can do all kinds of things with this. You can add it to your drink or um, hot tea in the winter time and it can help promote your immune system. So anybody else wanna add anything? With the vetiver, the vetiver is is Dave's favorite for mm -hmm. going to sleep because it's really relaxing, yeah. um, and it's it's it is very relaxing. I was um, I was doing a one to one with somebody, and um, it was in the middle of the day, and I never, I never I'm going up, you know, I'm just always going, and so um, I put it. I was showing her how. Um, vetiver was real, um, real thick, and when it, the drop finally started coming out, I'm like, "Oh no, I don't want to waste it." So I put it on my wrist and I rubbed it together. And I, you know, about 20 minutes later, we were done, and I went out to my car. I'm like, mm, "Oh my gosh, am I getting sick? What's happening to me? Oh, I'm so tired." And then I realized vetiver. <laughs> so it works. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. I know. In the middle of the day, maybe you need a nap. There you go. Take or I, think, I think there's been studies on vetiver for focus for people yeah. with issues. Well, it makes sense. It really does because it's grounding. And so when you're feeling that distraction, put some vetiver on. It will definitely ground you. So, and as a matter of fact, you know, Jackie brings up a good point. Like I've noticed now in the um, Modern Essentials book, which I really want to recommend to you. If you don't have one, you really do need one. It's like our Bible. <laughs> um, vetiver, yeah, there are research studies at the bottoms. And, you know, these uh, they just show how far we've come because when we first got this book, there was not much research. I mean, but now at the, after every oil, there's at least one or two articles. So in the case of vetiver, it's it's got an article about tuberculosis, you know. <clears throat> 
So anyway, um, yeah, I really recommend the Modern Essentials if you don't have one already. Make sure you get one. Uh, and ask your upline because a lot of us will help you do that. So moving on to the resin oils, uh, frankincense and myrrh. Um, you can see that beautiful resin there. Um, and I, I remember at convention seeing the movie of the women sorting the resin into A, B, and C, like three different qualities. And we get such high quality frankincense and myrrh. So the miracle of what they can do for us is so it supports a healthy inflammatory response, helps our immune system, is great for skin, and calms emotions. Um, and gotta love that. So tonight we're looking at myrrh, which is a resin, like we said, it's steam distilled, and it's just really great for the mouth and throat. It cleanses them. And you know, a lot of oral health is, is connected to how our hearts work and our cardiovascular system. So. Soothing to the skins, promoting youthful looking complexion, and it's great for emotional balance and well-being. So um, love myrrh. It seems like, you know, in the emotions book, they talk about it being um, related to your mother, whereas frankincense is kind of father. Um, it's kind of interesting how that works. And anyway, um, I've read things like they put myrrh around a baby's cord in the old days because they felt like it, first of all, they know that it would help prevent infection around the cord, but they also talked about how it um, warded off generational curses or something. <laughs> so anyway, um, love, love, love myrrh. It's just a really beautiful, calming, uh, grounding type of oil. So anybody want to share anything? And now that we have the frankincense special, which by the way, ends at midnight tonight. <laughs> Just three and a half more hours of that frankincense special until next year. <laughs> yeah, Sue Ball, what you got? Um, I'm not exactly sure how it happens. I have, I, I feel, I think it's leaving, something to do with leaving the cap off on myrrh. Don't mm -hmm. ever do that because it turns to almost like Elmer's glue. So you couldn't it's, get it to move? Yeah, mine, mine is fine, but one of my customers, and it was, I mean, it was terrible, and I, the only way I got it sort of liquidy like honey was by putting it on a heating pad, but then, of course, it didn't stay that way, and so I called uh, corporate, and they went, oh, well, yeah, there's nothing wrong with it, but, you know, that's not a good impression either, you know, it's not a cheap oil. No, it's not. It should move easily in the bottle, but, yeah, yeah it was, it was very, very, very thick, like very cold. Yeah, it probably yeah. flashed off, or what do I want to say? Yeah, lost some moisture and then got too thick. But yeah, it's hard to know what to do because I was thinking if you add heat, that might loosen it up. But the problem is it would lose some of its therapeutic qualities because the heat destroys the chemistry a bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So but they, they wouldn't budge on like, you know, can she send it back? Well, no, oh, really? there's nothing wrong with it. So really interesting. don't leave the cap off. Don't leave the cap off. That's good. Good. Fair warning. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for that. Anybody else want to share anything? Anything in particular about frankincense and myrrh? So myrrh, um, you know, April and Andy that just had their baby and they used it on the baby's umbilical cord, um, nice. which was, and they said it was amazing how quick their, her belly button healed. Um, so, you know, they're still using it today. Um, and also Deb and Eva told me about a mouthwash to, um, that has myrrh in it. And so I don't, one of my dogs and well, he's kind of elderly, he's 14, but all of a sudden he started getting like really bad breath. So I, <laughs> I put some myrrh and on guard and fractionated coconut oil. Um, I mixed that together and then like put it into his gums. And like two days later, his breath is, is so much better. Wow. So, cool. yeah, it's, it's really helping him. Yeah, I love that. I wonder if Deb and Eva could post the mouthwash recipe in our team um, or send it to us so we could see that. Because, yeah, I've been making my own mouthwash, but I haven't been putting myrrh in it. And I know myrrh is so good for the mouth. It would be great to have that. I actually got the recipe um, off of the doTERRA site. Okay. And uh, it just, it didn't have myrrh in it, so I added it to it. But yeah, I can post uh, the recipe. Okay, thank you. That would be awesome. Yeah, I love that idea. All right, sweet. Anybody else? 
All right, here we go. We got one more category, <laughs> and that is the seed oils, which are cardamom, coriander, and fennel, uh, helping with the liver, the reproductive system, the hormone system, and digestive support. Um, and we're working with fennel tonight, so I do really like fennel. Um, it's great for digestion, helps with metabolism, liver, liver function, circulation, may help support the health of the lungs and respiratory tract, and it's calming and soothing. And so, I mean, I really like the smell of this. I don't know um, <laughs> how you all feel about it, but I just think it's relaxing to me. Um, and it's, it's one of those oils, like sometimes when you're dealing with peppermint, like say you have a tummy ache, peppermint's a little cold, or what I want to say, startling a little bit. <clears throat> so fennel's more of a easy one to deal with if you're uh, just dealing with a little stomach upset. So I put it in a, a drop in tea sometimes, and it says it helps fight sweet tooth cravings, so that's good. Can't, can't argue with that. <laughs> Anybody have any fennel stories or cardamom? I love cardamom. I just don't always know what to do with it. I wish I had a good recipe for uh, cardamom cookies or something. <clears throat> Anybody have any anything they want to add? Isn't cardamom um, of the, in the same family as ginger? Is it? Oh, I don't know. I heard that. I think I heard that. Cardamom. Let's see. It could be. I have no idea. That's a good, good point, though. I have to do a little research on that. Um, cardamom is also very great for the digestive system, as is ginger. So, huh, interesting. All right. Well, anything else there? Anybody want to comment on any have any oil experiences they want to share? <laughs> because if not, I'll just show you this last slide, which is all about the LRP program, which is really the smartest way to buy. Um, it, it is a little bit complicated, but it is worth figuring out. So in months one to three, you get back 10% in free product, and all the way up to by the end of the year, you get back 30%, which is on top of your 25% savings. So as you maintain a 50 PV order through the year, you get those increasing percentages. And um, if you stay at 100, you can earn fast starts and commissions. And if you go to 125 between the first and the 15th of the month, you can get the free product of the month, which this month is wild orange. <clears throat> so if you were to order by the 15th tonight, um, you could get a wild orange if you hit 125 PV. So if you don't um, understand the LRP program, please talk to your upliner who enrolled you and they'll go over with you the finer points because um, that's what we're here to do is to help. So get those free oils every month. They add up. Using those points helps out to get some of these uh, pricier ones. And anyway, it's a lot of fun. So that is my, this is the bit about the commission system too. So the next class is the daily vitality class and we're glad you joined us tonight. Um, we hope you'll keep coming back. So I'll stop the share, and if anybody has any, any comments or any suggestions or ideas for us, please did let you, us know. Did you give the password? Oh, good. Thank you. Yeah, the password for tonight is foundations. Thank you for keeping me on the ball. <laughs> yeah, I have it written down here, but I didn't share it. So foundations is the password for tonight. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's it. Basically. Before you go, I wanted to make sure I get added to sure. the Facebook. And yeah. I talked to my upline, Mary. She said she was going to have to check with someone, but oh, does okay. someone know how I get added? Mary Smith, is that your upline? Mm -mm. Mary Robbins. Mary Robbins. Oh, okay. Mary Robbins. Yeah, definitely. We will add. We will add you. If Mary, you just send me her name. I'll make sure. Okay. Well, Latonya, um, you can ask to. Um, you can either have Mary just add you. Are you and Mary Facebook friends? I don't think so. Okay, so you can go to the, what's our site oh, called? Essential Wellness Continuing Education. And just ask to be added and one of the admins will add you. No problem. But thank you for, for pointing that out. That's great. Yeah. Some of these administrative things we got to get 
we got to get our act together on. So Thank anybody you. else that wants to be added to that Facebook page, and from now on, you can actually go to that Facebook page to watch it, if you know, the recording, if you missed it. And there'll be postings like the mouthwash recipe and different things so that hopefully, you know, we'll create a little community on that Facebook page. So if that's, if that's it, let's see. I think that's it. Thank you very much for coming, everyone. And we'll see you next Monday. Thank you. Yeah, take care. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Take care. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> hey.